Hello friends, welcome to your channel RU Geomatics. Today we will study about the fourth type of database structure named as the object oriented database structure or we can say it object uh, based data model. So we have studied about the three types of database structure already. So this is the continuation of the previous lectures. As the, all the three types of uh, database structure have the limitations or have the uh, problems for handling the complex spatial entities or large amount of data. But this object oriented database is very helpful and useful for the handling the complex spatial entities and uh, for resolving the problem of the database modifications when operations such as polygon uh, overlay are carried out. Means overall for handling the large amount of data and for handling the complex amount complex data this type of database structure is very helpful and useful and we already know that object based data model has uh, store the spatial and non spatial entity together so it has the application for solving the redundancy and sequential search in relational structure so uh, object oriented concept as its origin from computer programming language and uh, have found application in solving redundancy and sequential search in relational structure and we know that this uh, database structure is very useful for handling the complex spatial entities and for resolving spatial problems resolving the problems of database modification means if we want to modify the database data is stored in the means huge amount of data so if we um, perform any operation in the JIS application such as polygon overlay or for any other operation then this type of database model is very easy and helpful for solving the problems. In object oriented database data are defined in terms of a series of unique and discrete objects means the data that are stored in the uh, form of the object oriented that data has the unique or discrete object means they have the object class that occur in the natural phenomena so these object or unique objects have the similar phenomena means it is store uh, the information about the uh, their attributes or characteristics uh, in the similar phase as their special data of the object so characteristics of an object may be described in the database in terms of attributes which is known as the state and these uh, characteristics has a well set procedure. So this procedure or behavior is known as the operations or method. So we will see a diagram means how this object based model store the data then you will be uh, very clear about this. But you have to understand that it store the characteristics of an object and uh, which is known as the attributes or state and that set of procedure is known as the operations or methods. So these data are encapsulated within an object means there is a family or unique object which store all the information either they are special or non special information in an uh, storage in the database so which is defined by a unique identifier means every object has a unique identity uh, if we say that anything that are stored in the uh, database that has the unique uh, id or which is known as the unique object that are uh, present in the real world so if all the data means all the object information are stored in the database in the form of the object based orientation then the way to change that method or to query them means the data we have to send a message or we have to send a request which is known as a message for carrying out any operation or to perform any operation on that data so it is very important means if we store the data in database uh, according to the object based orientation then to perform any operation on these data or to carry, carry 
the data we have to send a request or known as a message and what type of query we can perform it depends on the uh, operation means it depends on the objects that are defined in the object based data model because all the information about the object or their characteristics are stored within uh, the database so the types of query and similarly their response means if we want to query the data so their response or of the message will depends on states means in what uh, phase it has been stored means the data has been stored about the object so all these things are depend on the uh, objects or uh, what information has been defined in the objects because that uh, uh, message that we want to query that will uh, we will uh, find the different response from the different uh, objects so this is, is known as the polymorphism means there are many objects which has the unique id and they have stored their characteristics or attribute information which is known as the state as we have seen so all the response that we are querying depends on their state information uh, state position so the same message will uh, may have the different reaction from the different objects or different contexts so this type of uh, response is known as a polymorphism and it is uh, seen in the object based uh, data model so data used in the object oriented database need to be clearly definable as unique as identities or entities so this is the format of object oriented uh, database structure for the same data in this uh, information if we want to store a uh, distinct information then we have to store all its characteristics means their address how can we uh, reach to the districts so and uh, what type of service type of building and their owners all these information it will have and after it another information means uh, like their name type of consumer amount used and means their user information so all the information are stored together and uh, this is the format of the object oriented and uh, these are the entity which has the unique id means every district means uh, will have the different name or uh, different uh, unique id so what is the importance of this object oriented database uh, it provide very efficient structure of organizing hierarchical interrelated data and the establishing the database is obviously time consuming as the object may be defined more explicitly and the various links need to be established so after storing the data in the format of object based uh, orientation or object based uh, database structure it is very helpful and it is very efficient for querying any operation or for querying the uh, data especially with reference to the specific objects means if we want to query about a unique id or about a specific object then it will give the response very fast so it is very efficient for huge amount of data or complex data so this was all about the object based uh, database structure now we have study about four types of basic uh, database structures first one was the hierarchical second network third was the relational and fourth was the object oriented now these all types of means four types of database structure has unique and their significance so as in case of hierarchical systems which allows the large databases uh, to be divided easily into the manageable chunks because we have seen that it has a parent child relationship so but they are inflexible for uh, large amount of data or for building new search paths and they may contain much redundant because we have seen that it has the reputation nature so this was all over the hierarchical nature and this hierarchical approach has the significance for the uh, seamless mapping which make very easily uh, the mapping because it uh, has the continuous data
means in hierarchical approach uh, the special data are divided into the manageable themes or manageable areas means uh, child segment and that is the continuous data so for mapping uh, the data is very easy in case of hierarchical approach now second one was the network systems and it uh, has less redundant data or it does not repeat the data so and uh, it is very helpful for fast and directed and inflexible links between related entities because we have seen that network system has the uh, links between the data so it is very useful and it is very uh, it has a significant in the topological linked vector lines or polygons and third one was the relational system which was open flexible and adaptable but may suffer from the large data volumes redundancy and long search time means if we have the large amount of data then relational become less flexible so for large data volumes it may have redundancy but it has the significance and it is very useful for the retrieving objects means for retrieving the data from the data model on the basis of their attributes and for creating new attributes and attribute value from the existing data it is very useful means relational approach is very useful for retrieving the objects and creating the new attributes now last one was the object oriented systems which permit the relations functionality persistence means continuity and the interdependence to be built into one system at the expense of the programming because this object oriented uh, system is based on the programming in the computer language so similar uh, it works on the similar principle so it uh, is very useful for the more complex and heavier demands on the computing power means for complex data we can use the object oriented system approach because in this uh, ob object oriented structure the entities uh, share attributes or interact in the special way because all the information is stored in uh, together now object oriented model uh, if we say o odb means object oriented database it is the com combination of two uh, first one is the o means uh, opl means object oriented programming language system and persistence system because the uh, special data mostly is lies persistent data means continu continuous data and uh, uh, if we run the program language in the computer that is the opl uh, so oedb means object oriented database is useful for both of both types of the uh, data the power of oedb comes from the seamless treatment of both persistent data is found in the database and the transient data is found in the executing program so this is very useful for both types of data object odbms object database management system at database functionality to object programming language they bring much more than pers uh, persistent storage of programming language objects so and provide full featured database programming capability so this is very uh, this is the significance of odb with respect to the programming language and it is not uh, useful for our exam purpose if we talk about the relational dbms where complex data structure must be flattened out to fit into tables means all the data are stored in the form of tables and they are linked with a uh, common data which is known as a key so join together from the those tables to form the in memory structure object odbms have no performance overhead to store or retrieve a web or hierarchy of interrelated objects but odbms has the uh, capability to store the data in the web format so it is related odbms is very related to the programming language because it has the one to one mapping it is important as we have seen one to many uh, approach was followed by the hierarchical position and it has the and many to many approach was followed by the network position, uh, database structure and it has the one to one mapping this one to one mapping of the object programming language objects to database objects has two benefits over rather storage approach 
so it has two benefit first one is the it has the it provide the higher performance management of the objects so better is the performance in case of object orientation data model and second it enables better management of complex interrelations between objects so due to this one to one mapping of project programming object based uh, object based database uh, database system is very useful for the complex interrelationship between the objects so this makes the dbms better suited to support applications such as risk analysis systems so what is the application of this object based uh, database structure it is very uh, supportive for the applications such as risk analysis system telecommunication service applications www world wide web document structures design and manufacturing systems which are complex relationship between data so in this uh, applications object based database structure is used for making very easier and because they have the complex relationship between the data main problem of object oriented model is the implicit uncertainty of the geographical ideas therefore it is difficult to represent them in rigidity bounded data set and there is no any theoretical base or standard query language for object oriented model because in this uh, want to, if we want to query then we have to send a request or a message for getting the response and the response is achieved so the response is achieved by the state of the object means uh, what state and what uh, characteristics we are querying about the object then we get the response and uh, it may we may get uh, different response for the from the different objects uh, for the same message now this is the uh, another topic structured query language sql which is important for the exam purpose and uh, what is this it is a data query means if you want to query uh, to any database or data model then we have a model how we can query or in how we can ask the uh, data for any information so we have to uh, follow a system or model so sql generally is very useful for the relational database structure because we have seen that object oriented database structure has no any uh, query language but sql is very useful for the relational database structure sql is a data query and manipulation language with the design for relational databases and sql was originally developed by ibm in the 1970 and later many commercial dbms like microsoft oracle access informix and other have adopted sql so sql is very important because gate exam can ask the question about this sql so structured query language means we want to perform a query in the in a proper format or in a proper manner but it is very uh, it has some limitations or some application means uh, where it can be response or how it is very useful for database structure we all see about this sql so first of all we have to understand it is very useful for the relational database and it was first uh, developed by the ibm but later it was uh, adopted by other dbms like microsoft oracle access informix now sql is a standard sub language for querying tables mainly it is helpful or it is uh standard for querying the tables and we know that relational database uh, store the data in the form of tables and they have the common data for the link purpose or which is known as the key so it is standard for the querying tables and it involves the use of tables which should be linked before the query so if we want to query any uh, database then we have to satisfy that they have the proper linkage between the tables so for performing this sql we have to uh, link the table before performing the query language becomes much more powerful when tables are linked by using common keys as a result the processing of much more complex queries that involve multiple tables are possible because after uh, linking the tables then it is very uh, easy for querying the data 
because they have the common keys then it can be performed and we get the response quickly and we can easily uh, query the complex data so more complex methods of uh, table interrogation include the ability to average the values of an attribute across selected records and to create a new attribute through arithmetic operations on existing ones means if we want to add any new attribute in the table then it can perform the uh, ratio of two selected attributes means for complex method or interrogation any uh, table data this uh, sql approach or language is followed now to perform the sql or standard uh, query language we have a uh, fundamental syntax of sql means this is the syntax select uh, it has the attribute list and from it has the relation and where means it has the condition means if we want to query and uh, from the database or data model then we have to follow this uh, structure of the query which is known as the syntax and what uh, means this select from and where uh, which are shown in the italic form are the keywords and select represent the field or fields means it has been chosen from the field or fields which uh, here is the attribute list and keyword from means it has the table or tables from the data means which what is the relation between the table and means uh, from which table uh, the query will perform on the attributes so attribute list is the field and relation uh, will be represented by the table and where means the condition condition is the uh, for the data query means what condition is performing on the data so this syntax will be followed to perform the sql or query on the uh, database sql is applicable to both mean local and external databases and sql model only works in gis package because it has the already prepared the keywords like select from and where means uh, which have already prepared the keywords like select from and where then uh, only the sql can be performed so in gis it uh, these keywords already performed so in gis packages sql can be performed and uh, it is uh, complex to perform means sql programming is relatively complex so we need a skill uh, labor or skill person for uh, programming and for performing the sql to any database now this sql is again classified into types first one is the ddl data defining definition language which is used for creating tables so it can be also asked it is also important that two types of sql are ddl and dml data definition language and data manipulation language and ddl is used for creating tables and relationships between the data and dml is used for queries and data modification so it is important to uh, learn about these two types of sql categories so it is important for the gate exam now this was all about the sql and uh, we have studied about the four types of uh, database structure and data models and sql is also important so we have to uh, take care of this now another important topic is the buffering and we have seen the a question about the buffering in the previous gate exam so it is most important topic because question can be asked about this and we will uh, know about how buffering area polygon means it uh, uh, cover the area so how to calculate that we will uh, study in this topic now what is the buffering first of all buffering what is the buffering and it mainly is the proximity function it can be asked in the msq uh, question so buffering function is the proximity function in gis and one of the neighbors functions it means buffering is also the neighborhood functions and it is used to create so main def definition is the to create a zone of interest around an entity or set of entities and what is the entity like uh, point polygon line so these are represented in the uh, these are the data models that represent the real world feature in the gis 
uh, data so these entities uh, needs to create a zone of interest for uh, analysis and that zone of interest is known as the buffering so means uh, if we have to see the diagram then this is the point then we want to make a zone of interest for the 5 meter or any uh, length of buffer then it will make a circle so for point it is made with a circle and for line it will be a cylinder cylindrical shape and it will cover area and for polygon it will also cover area so how it is created means if we want to uh, see this this is a point and we want to buffer for 5 meter and uh, like 7 meter then 5 meter will have the blue color and 7 meter will have the buffer of white color so similarly if there is a line and we want to uh, make a buffer line of the from the d distance at a distance of d meter or any d kilometer maybe it will be any uh, measurement length will be given for making the buffer system so we know that every point has uh, made with the help of the points so at starting and end node will have the circle as the buffer area and line will have the uh, parallel area at a distance d means at what distance we want to make the buffer it will be given and if we want to take this example so this area will be covered twice so we will remove it and it will be uh, made with like this like a track so this line will have the buffer like this so we have to calculate this area for uh, finding the buffer means two of circles sorry one of the circle because half circle half circle and this rectangle so for calculating the buffer area of this line we have to calculate the area of this portion means two circles and the uh, rectangle or we can say the cylinder of the area now if we take two lines then it will made similarly but we have to understand that buffer area will have the equal distance from the entity means if we want to uh, make the d1 at the d1 distance then it will have the equal distance for point it will have the circle and for uh, making the buffer at d2 distance then it will make this track similarly for the polygon if we want to uh, make the buffer of this polygon at d distance then from every point the buffer uh, line will have the d distance from the existing polygon so it this distance will be d this distance will be d every portion will have the equal distance uh, similarly we take an, another example of uh, buffer at the distance d1 so it will be made at so every point will have the d1 distance and if we want to make a buffer of this polygon at distance d2 then every point from existing polygon will have the d2 distance means every point will have the equal distance at what we want to make a buffer area so and uh, two points are there first one that uh, points have the circular zone means a point is buffered a circular zone is created and for buffering the lines and areas create the new areas we have seen the diagram for the point it is circular in nature and for line it will cover an area and for polygon it will also cover an area so it is very important now other uh, important points about the buffering is the buffering allows a special entity to influence its neighbors or the neighbors to influence the character of the entity means if we want to make a if we make a buffer area then uh, this buffer area may affect the existing quantity entity and uh, this existing entity may also offer the uh, also affect the uh, influence or character of neighbors so both are uh, 
linked with each other by making the buffer area and there are other uh, neighborhood function like data filtering so it involves the recirculation of cells in the raster image based on the characteristics of the neighborhood so this is the example of the uh, buffering and uh, we have already know that point uh, if a point is buffered then circular zone is created and for buffering the lines or areas created new areas so we will solve a numerical on the basis of the buffering in the quiz so we have to know everything about the buffering and how we should have how we have to calculate the buffering area and uh, because that question was asked in the uh, gate previous years and it is important topic to understand and now other important topics or other important terminology like overlay we will uh, study in the next lecture